invite the congregation to please rise. We'll be following the order of worship that you find in the bulletin that you received on your way in. We make our beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Jan was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you. So teach us to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Please be seated as we sing our opening hymn. You'll find it in the white booklet in the pew in front of you in a booklet called Sounds of Joy. We'll be singing Here I Am, Lord, on page 28.
Please rise. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Jan and to all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The Old Testament lesson selected for today comes from the book of Job, the 19th chapter. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? Why are you not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. The epistle selected for today comes from the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the verse. Alleluia, alleluia, Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever. Alleluia. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our sermon hymn number 710. Grace, mercy, peace, and love be unto you from God our Father, from Jesus our Savior, and from the Holy Spirit, our source of comfort and strength. What a joy it is and privilege to be able to stand here and preach a funeral sermon for Jan Ufkus. And you say, well, that's a strange emotion to have at a funeral, right? But it really isn't. It, because when you are able to preach a message about someone like Jan, it fills your heart with great joy knowing that she is now with the Lord, up in glory. No more pain, no more suffering, no more sadness. 
You know, as, as I read the obituary, I, I saw that, uh, that Jan was baptized on June 9th, 1940, just three weeks after she was born. And so what that says to me was that she had parents that loved God and, and loved their daughter, loved her enough to baptize her and give her the gift of God's grace. Through baptism, her name was written in the book of life. And, and so, as a baptized child of God, she no longer had to just hope that she would go to heaven. She could be confident that she was going to heaven because her name was written in the book of life through the waters of baptism, which is the same for every one of you here today that have been baptized. You know, one of, one of my favorite verses is Mark 16, 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. It's about that simple. You know, I, I don't know how many times I've visited with people that are getting close to dying, and they'll say, well, Pastor, I, I just hope I've done enough. And I'll say to them, it's not what you have done. It's what Christ has done. He's already got it done for you. Through faith in him, you are saved, not through works that you have done. And Jan certainly understood that and believed that. I also noticed in the obituary on April 3rd, 1955, that was the day of her confirmation. And, and what, a, what a beautiful verse the pastor selected for her at that time, Revelation 2.10 be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. What a beautiful verse. What a promise. And that's not just if that would happen to be your confirmation verse. That's for all who believe. That's what we got looking forward to us. And, and there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that God has placed that crown on Jan as she entered into glory. And see, one of the goals I have in this message here today, and why I have joy, is because I have these promises of God. Because I cling to these promises of God, and I know that Jan believed in those promises of God. And so what I'm trying to do here today for the family especially, and for all of you, is to bring some balance back in. See, when someone you love dies, your life is out of balance. Sadness way outweighs the gladness, right? And, and so our challenge is to begin the process of trying to get our life back in balance. How do we do that? Through focusing on God's promises and remembering all those happy memories. You know, I was talking to the family a little bit last night at the, at the viewing, and, and they were telling me how they were all sharing their memories that they got together and the family was remembering the good times and some of the not good times, but they were good memories. And, and, that, and that's part of that healing process. It's already begun. You, the family encouraging one another and sharing memories, and, and, but most importantly, sharing the promises of God. You know, in our... In our last song that we just sang in the hymnal, M number 710, uh, that, that really was just the 23rd Psalm, right? And, and, and we are, are reminded that God has promised us. So the last verse of Psalm 23 is, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, that's a question that, that I've asked a lot of people on that store. Uh, I'm not the pastor now. Pastor McReynolds has that pleasure of dealing with a lot of that, but I do. I've done it for 30 years. And I, and I know what it's like to be able to, to go up to someone and say, after reading Psalm 23, do you believe this? Do you believe that you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever? And they'll say, well, yes, pastor, I do. I said, well, how does that make you feel? That should fill your heart overflowing with joy. And I believe that Jan had that confidence, that assurance, and she knew without a doubt where she was going. Now Ron came up to me today right before the service says, he said, Pastor, I read Portals of Prayer today. 
which should be every day, Ron, right? I've been telling you for years. <laughs> and, and, and the portals of prayer today had Psalm 90, the, 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 the processional psalm that was read. And, and, and verse 4 of that verse, it says, A thousand years in your sight are but yesterday. So we've got to remember, what happens when you die, your body goes into the ground, and your soul goes to be with the Lord. In Psalm 1611, it says, You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. So I want all of you here today, especially family, to picture in your mind that Jan is in the presence of her Savior, who loved enough to die for her, loved her enough to be with her every day of her life, loved her enough to bring her to be with him. And now she's in his presence and overflowing with inexpressible joy. That's the promises of God. So when our loved one has that joy, somehow, some way, it's in our heart too, because we have that joy for her. I know that we have our sadness, but her joy somehow helps to bring that balance back into our hearts. But also, the happy memories do as well. And you know when we sang the first hymn today, Here I Am, Lord, I can picture Jan singing that song. Because she was that kind of woman. That's how she lived her life. You know, here I am, Lord. I've heard you calling in the night. I will go if you need me. In other words, what would you like me to do, Lord? And she always had her hand up. You know, if we needed somebody to take care of the altar, there she was, taking care of the altar. That was, that was Jan. When we needed somebody to volunteer over the food pantry, there she was with a smile on her face, gladly handing out food to the needy here in our community. And she didn't just go once in a while. When I looked at the schedule, I saw her name quite often, month after month, year after year. That's how she was. And, and rummage sales, boy, she's the first one. She'd be out there helping everybody, working side by side with all the ladies to make sure things got done. And when it came to funeral meals, she was there. If the kitchen was open, you could probably find Jan in it. Because that's how she was. She didn't, wasn't trying to earn salvation. She already got that free from God. You can't earn it. Or you don't get saved by doing works. But because you've been saved, because God showed his love into you, you want to give that love back. Jan knew that. And Jan was there. And, and in that service of God, many happy memories were shared. For all of us that are here that work side by side with her, we remember her face. We remember her, her willing heart to serve. And those memories are part of what's going to help us get our life back together. Memories and promises. You know, Jan was born on May 19, 1940. And, you know, if my math is good this morning, that means she was 81 years old, okay? Now, I can only imagine what it's like to be 81 years old, but I'm really not that far away. And already I'm starting to experience some of the things that aging brings, like aches and pains. Like my memory isn't quite the same as it once was. I don't know how many times I walk into a room and say, why am I in here? You know, it just, aging wears you down. But the good news, one of the promises of God is that when we die, our old body is put into the ground, we enter up into glory to be with God, and we wait for our new bodies. And when we get those new bodies, they won't be old. And how do I know? God's promises. 
In 1 Corinthians 15, 52, it says, In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. You know what imperishable means? You never grow old. You don't get wrinkled. You no longer need glasses or hearing aids or a cane. You have no more imperfections. You are brought to the pinnacle of your life, restored, renewed, and just like new. Better. In Philippians 3.21, the Apostle Paul tells us that Christ will transform our lowly, lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. And in Revelation 21.4, the Bible says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. So in good Lutheran tradition, we ask, what does this mean? Yeah. Well, in my own gut... As I read these scriptures, and that's what all you can do is really apply them to your own self. You, ha you, have, you have to say, well, what does this mean? All these verses that we're going to be like Christ, that we'll have a body like Christ, and, and, and that there'll be no more tears, and, and no more pain, and, and no more crying. What it means to me, and, and it, the Bible doesn't actually say this, but this is how I feel, that Jesus rose and went to heaven, and how old was he? Thirty-three. So is it fair that we might possibly be 33 in heaven? I think so, but we'll have to wait and find out, right? Yeah, because I think that God loves us and he wants us to be healthy and vibrant and strong. He wants us to enjoy the new creation that he will make when Christ returns. I look forward to that day. I think it's going to be the most awesome thing we've ever seen. If I could turn my page, I'll continue. All right, here we go. Part of being old. You know, it has special meaning to me to know that we're going to get new bodies, repaired bodies. Um, just to give you a little background of, from my life, my mom, when she was two years old, came down with polio. So for the rest of her life, she had to wear a brace on her leg. Her leg was paralyzed her whole life. And her whole life, she limped through life because of that paral paralyzed leg. Well, I know that when Christ returns, she will get a new body with no more brace, no more limp. She'll be dancing on the streets of gold, right? That's as they say in the song. And my dad, when, when my dad was five years old, the, his family was getting ready to go on a camping trip. And my dad was riding around the block on his bike, and he fell off, and he broke his wrist. I actually broke the bones, both bones right above his wrist, actually. And my grandparents rushed to the hospital and said, we're in a hurry, can you put a cast on him so we can go? And they did. And throughout the, the week of camping, his arm hurt real bad, and they went to a med station, and they trimmed the cast a little bit to loosen it up. But when they got done camping and got home, an awful smell was coming from that cast, and my dad's arm, the flesh was falling off. So the doctors sewed that arm into the skin of, around his stomach to get new skin back on. But all they could do after all their surgeries and, and all of their medical science, he had a hand like this for the rest of his life. It was amazing what he could do with that hand. But I look forward to that day when Christ returns and he gets a new hand. He'll be new again. And why do I share that story? Because I want you to believe that the body that is in that casket is not the body that you will see on the last day. Oh yes, she will look like the person you married, Ron. I will believe she'll be every bit as beautiful as the day you married her. I believe that she will have the same energy she had when she was your mother 
and you were run, running around the neighborhood and she was keeping up with you. Why do I believe, believe that? Because God makes everything new. And God loves us and he wants us to be happy. And he wants us to be with him. So he gives us that promise that one day they'll be new. And I, you know, some of you might be thinking, well, Pastor, what's happening now when she's in heaven? Isn't she sad that we're down here and she's up there and, and we can no longer be connected? We well, you know how the Bible works. It tells us this, that when we die, we enter into to this eternal heaven. And heaven has no time. Like we said in Psalm 90, verse 4. Basically, a blink of an eye in heaven is like a thousand years on earth. So, Jan gets to heaven, blinks her eyes a few times at the glory all around her and the joy of the presence of her Lord with her, and all you who believe in Jesus are right there with her. So she doesn't have any time to cry, any time to mourn, because all you who love her will be with her before she's even aware that, that you're not. Unfortunately, it is us who stay behind, and we aren't in that kind of eternal bliss. We have 60 seconds in a minute, and 60 minutes in an hour, and 24 hours in a day, and 365 days in a year. And time sometimes can drag on when you, you miss your loved one. All I can hold out for you, and I hope this will give you strength to endure these days, is there is a promise of a grand family reunion. A grand family reunion. In Isaiah 25, verse 6, 9, it says, On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he'll destroy the shroud that enfolds all people, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. So what this is really saying is Christ will return in all power, and all the bodies of those who have died will be brought up and glorified, made new. God will place their soul back in, and then if we're still here on earth, we will uh, meet them in the sky and also be transformed that way. And then we have this mountaintop experience. A family reunion. We see all our loved ones once again in their renewed and glorified state. And I believe that that feast will go on today, tomorrow, and forever. And I pray that just the picture of that will give you strength to endure. Amen. Please stand as we continue with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the family of Jan and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, O Lord, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, receive our thanks for Jan and for all the blessings that you have bestowed on her in her earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy, and you bring them home. Comfort us with a certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who by his blood redeemed this body, may God the Holy Spirit who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death. And by his rest in the tomb, you sanctified the graves of your saints, and by his bodily resurrection, you brought life and immortality to light, so that all who die in him abide in peace and hope. Receive our thanks for the victory over death and the grave that he won for us. Keep us in everlasting communion with all who wait for him on earth and with all in heaven who are with him. For he is the resurrection and the life, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn, number 461. that 
at my reach. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Let us remember with thanksgiving what God has done through his servant, Janus Ufkus. Janus Carlene Ufkus was given life by her creator and was born on May 19, 1940, the child of Tees and Dorothea Johnson. On June 9, 1940, she received the gift of holy baptism and became a child of God. On April 3, 1955, she publicly confessed her faith and was confirmed and received the precious gift of the Lord's life-giving body and blood. Janice was joined together in holy matrimony to Ronald Ufkus on February 18, 1961. 
They were blessed with 60 years of married life together. She was blessed with the gift of four children, Pamela, Patricia, Philip, and Paul. She is predeceased by her son, Philip. God blessed Janice's life with many people as she served God in her vocations at home, church, work, and in the community. Finally, on August 22, 2021, God blessed Janice with a holy death and took her home to rest in the arms of Jesus to await the resurrection of the dead. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give thanks to God our Father through Jesus Christ our Lord for our sister Janice. This concludes today's service. I've asked that the family stick around in the narthex to greet you as guests and visitors for the service today, and then they will, after that, uh, gather together as family in our fellowship hall for a time of fellowship amongst themselves as family. We'll follow the processional out after the casket, and you're welcome to greet after that.